So a very common use for Linux is to uh, use it as a web server because of the licensing issues. We don't have to wrestle with the same licensing issues when we're hosting a website on a Linux server that we do if we're hosting it on a Windows server. So let's look at installing one of our popular uh, web servers. Now we've got two of them that are really, really popular in Linux. And we're going to tackle both of them in different videos. They are Apache and Nginx. So in this particular video, we're going to look at installing uh, Apache. So our command is going to be pretty simple. It's sudo on the right screen, sudo apt install, and it's Apache 2. If I can type correctly, Apache 2. There we go. And that will install the Apache web server for us. And then, of course, everything that's required. So it's a pretty straightforward install. So we're almost already done with it here. 98%. Okay. And there we go. Now, I should be able to check that by using the command systemctl status Apache 2. And that will show me that my Apache 2 server is running. Now, at this point, I actually should have a website up and running. So I'm going to run an IPA to look and see what my IP address is. And then I'm going to just open up a new browser window. I'm doing this on another screen. I'm going to drag it over here in a minute. And I'm going to go to my IP address, 134, which once I turn on my number lock, 134.39.161.8. And I'm going to drag this over here into this window so you can see it. And we're up and running. We have the Apache 2 default Ubuntu web page. Congratulations, it works. And then this gives us just a little bit of information about configuring Apache, some documentation, some reporting problems. Now, this is the default website that Apache installs. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. And let's take a look at where things are at a little bit. So I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to forward slash etc forward slash apache2 and we'll do an lsl and so here is our configuration file so we have the apache2.conf and then we've got configuration available configuration enabled sites available sites enabled mods available mods enabled so our basic configuration i'll nano this here real quick we're not going to change anything. I just want you to see it. So here is our base configuration. And you'll see some more documentation here. And then as we scroll down, here are some settings. And a lot of them are um, commented out. And you can activate them if you need to. So this gives you your basic configuration with all the notations about it. And we're going to leave that in place for the moment. But I want to show you a couple of other things here. And that is the sites enabled and the sites available. So I'm going to do LSL for sites enabled. And this is going to show us the sites that are currently active. So you'll see our default.conf and it's 000 defaultconf Also notice that that is a link to sites available. So if I do an LSL for sites available, that's going to show me all of my websites that are currently available, but they don't actually become online until they become enabled. Now, uh, there is a command. It's, I believe it's A2 EN site, which will enable you a, or will allow you to enable a site. So basically, if you're going to add multiple sites, what you'll do is you'll go into the sites available and you'll create your config files for it. So let's actually go in there, sites available. And here is our 000-default.conf. Notice, by the way, it's got a default SSL site, but that's not in your sites enabled. It's because we have to uh, grab some certificates and things like that to make that site work. So let's do a nano for 000 dash default.conf. And here's my main configuration for the site. You'll notice that this is a virtual host. Asterisk means listen on any IP address. So you can have basically one default site and you're listening on port 80. Now, if you wanted to create multiple sites on the server, then you could associate them with different server names 
or with different IP addresses. And basically you'd create one of these config sites for everyone. If you, however, you're hosting a single site, you don't need to. I'll show you how you can update the site here in a minute. So we have a server admin and a document root, which tells us where those files are located. And if you're running multiple sites, then each one has to go to a different document root. If you're running a single site, then you can use just that one. And then error logs. And then down, as you scroll down, you're going to see that, um, actually, we're going to come to the end there. Um, so what you would do is if you wanted to create different sites, then you'd create different site files and enable them using the A2E in site. And then to disable a site for some reason, you do the A2DIS site, which Apache to disable site. And that's if you ever wanted to take one down. Okay, but let's say we're running just a single site. In that case, what we really need from here is this, our document root, and it's var www.html. So I'm gonna exit from here. And let's go there, cd forward slash var forward slash www forward slash html. And here is our site. And you'll see there's only one file right here. Not a big deal. It's an index.html file. If we want to run a single site, all we have to do is upload those site files, preferably starting with an index.html to this location. And that's it. And we have a static site enabled. If we were to go through and rewrite that HTML file, that's what would be served instead of that default HTML file that we saw a little bit earlier on when I opened up the web page showing that Apache was running. So if all you're doing is a single basic site, basically at this point, you just install Apache, you put it in and you go. Now, Apache is capable of doing a whole lot more than just a basic site. So to add additional functionality to the Apache web server beyond things like um, adding in additional sites, right? So if you want to add PHP support or Python support or something like that, for that, we would need to add modules. And that's what we're going to look at in our next video.